Hello everyone. I'm Jerry Barrett and welcome to my kitchen. You know, for many years my husband John and I ran a cowboy cafe in a little town in Montana. Our customers were the cowboys and workers from all over the county. These were good people who wanted good food and lots of it. So each day we would create a daily special. And in those fun days, one of the most popular dishes we made was that classic dish of beef and homemade noodles. We used an old noodle recipe we learned from John's mom and put it together with a big portion of beef tips. We sold out of this dish every time we made it. Everyone loved it, including our six sons. And the son that loved it most of all was my youngest son, Joe. And now here it is, 50 years later, and Joe is still making beef and homemade noodles. So we are going to share that recipe with you today. As you know, I like to cook with family. So at this time, I'm going to introduce my youngest son, Joe. Hi, Mom. Hi, Joe. I'm happy to be here and have a chance to cook with you, and I'm very happy that we're making beef and noodles. That was my all-time number one daily special at the old cafe. Now I'm going to show you how to make the beef tips component of the beef and noodles dish. Because remember, as fantastic as the noodles are, that's only half the dish. The noodles are great, but it's the beef that adds that richness and fullness and really helps to, you to get through those long, cold Montana days. So they actually go together beautifully. Uh, so now I'll show you the ingredients and later I'll show you how we assemble it. So the first thing we need is seasoned flour, which is simply about a half a cup of flour, about a tablespoon of pepper and a tablespoon of salt all mixed together into a bag, a bag such as this. And to that we have about two pounds of uh, sirloin tips. I went to the butcher and I actually had him cut the sirloin tips into about one inch size pieces for me. That's a good size because they do uh, shrink up a lot while you're cooking. You can use any kind of meat for this by the way. You can use round steak, you can use uh, chuck roast, you can cut it up yourself, you can go to the store and see a package already labeled stew meat. Any of that's acceptable. We like to use the actual sirloin tips because we find that it tastes the best and it gives you a really tender product. Uh, we move on and we're going to be browning the meat in butter and olive oil. And it's very important that you use butter with your olive oil and not just olive oil. The butter adds some flavor and it also helps with the browning process. So definitely use a combination. Uh, and then my dad would have at that, this point added beef stock high enough to just cover the meat. Now I have my own recipe and my own adaptations that I've learned over the years and so there's a couple of things that I'd like to show you. First of all, before we add the beef broth, I like to uh, deglaze the pan with about a half a cup of red wine. Uh, that brings up all the good brown fond off the bottom of the pan and it adds some nice flavor components. And another trick is to add about two tablespoons of tomato paste. Now the tomato paste does not make the meat taste tomatoey, but what it does is increase the beefy flavor of the meat. So it's a good trick if you want to bring out the beefy flavor of any beef dish. So those are all the ingredients and now we're going to move on to assembly. So the first thing we're going to do is turn on our pan over a medium high heat and we'll let that warm up while we're assembling the rest of the ingredients. That way it'll be nice and hot when we're ready. The next thing we do is we get the seasoned flour together in order to uh, coat the meat. So the seasoned flour is a half a cup of flour added to a simple plastic bag. You can use a Ziploc bag if you want. You just want it be, to be large enough that you can actually get some real movement so you can shake up the meat. Uh, I like to put about a tablespoon of salt and a tablespoon of pepper. Now that's quite a bit of pepper, but I've just found by my own preference, I like my uh, coating to be kind of spicy. I think it makes the meat taste better. So you mix that up just gently. And then what we do is add the meat and then get ready to shake it up in the pan. And one last thing, so we have the meat in here and I'm going to uh, give it, actually it's helpful to just blow the bag and get a little bit of air in it. 
So you can see that allows you to really shake up the meat and the flour and get a good coating on all the pieces. You can move them around with your fingers if you need to, but when all is done, and it should only take about 30 seconds, but when it's all done, you'll have meat and each piece will be lightly coated by this flour. All right, now I don't, um, now the next thing we need to do before we empty the meat out is add the oil and the butter to the pan. So we use about two tablespoons of oil and about a tablespoon of butter and we let that get nice and sizzling until the butter stops foaming and that's when we know it's time to add the meat. After coating the meat with the flour I've added the first batch of meat to the pan. If you listen closely, you can hear it sizzling behind me. I'll show you what we've done so far. This is the first batch of meat, and you can see it's getting a nice brown glaze to it. We're going to finish that up. We'll take it out of the pan, and we'll add the second batch and do the same thing. And then we'll move on from there. So now let's remove this first batch from the frying pan. We'll just add it to a plate, and then we will add the second batch and repeat the process. And boy, that looks good. You can see how nice it looks. The flour actually really helps the meat to brown. You can brown meat without flour, but it doesn't get that same kind of color. And the color is really beautiful, and plus it helps to create what we call a fond on the bottom of the pan, and that has a lot of flavor in it. So now, we finished browning all the meat, and we've removed it from the pan. Now again, you can see the meat has this beautiful brown color. And not only that, it's also very flavorful because of the seasoning in the flour. Remember, we put a good healthy dose of salt and pepper in the flour. So we remove it from the pan so we can move on to the next step. The next step is deglazing the pan with about a half a cup of red wine. And any red wine will do. I'd say it's just whichever kind you're planning to drink. You don't need a lot. It's just enough to be able to pick up all the bits of flour and meat that are stuck on the bottom of the pan. So when you're done, the bottom of the pan is nice and clean. Now we add back the meat. And we add enough beef broth just to cover the meat. So you don't want it full as if it's boiling, you just want it barely covering the meat. Now you can see in this case it looks like one of these large containers is actually sufficient. We don't need the second one. So now you can see this is what it means to cover, barely to cover. And now the last tip is to add those two tablespoons of tomato paste that I had talked about and stir that in. And again, it'll, stir, it'll uh, cook in with the beef broth over time so you don't have to worry about getting it perfectly smoothed in. You just have to make sure and give it a stir so that it's separated in the pan. Now, we have the beef, we have the beef broth, we have the deglazed pan, we have the wine, and we have the tomato paste. Uh, we add a little bit of thyme. I'd say this is dried thyme, so it's a little stronger than fresh. So I'd say about a teaspoon of thyme. Then we take a piece of aluminum foil, use it to cover the pan. And the reason we do that is we want to make a really nice, tight seal on this pan. We don't want any of the moisture escaping because this is going to be cooking for quite a long time. So we add aluminum foil to the top of the pan, add the lid, Now, bring this to a nice, strong boil, which should only take about a minute. And once it's boiling, we want to move it to a back burner on a really low heat. We want the heat to be as low as possible. You want a bare simmer, because this is going to cook for about three hours. By cooking for three hours, it makes the meat tremendously tender, and also it gives all of those ingredients a chance to meld and work together and infuse into the meat. Um, and the main thing is, the meat is going to be so tender that you'll be able to eat it with a fork. So after this comes to a nice heavy boil, we immediately put it on a low, low heat and let it go for three hours at a bare simmer. 
Now if you do choose to, it works just as well to set your oven at 300 degrees and you can put it in your oven and let it go that way. I do it on the stove top, I just find it's easier to just do everything right here on the top. But once we have the meat slid onto a low, low heat for a low simmer, uh, then we have time to make our noodles and at the very end we'll put everything together and you'll be able to see the finished dish. Well, it's been three hours so it's time to take a look at our sirloin tips. So let's uh, get the lid off of this and the foil. Make sure to not burn yourself. And you can see what it looks like. I brought it back up to a boil because we're about to add some flour and water to thicken it. But for the three hours it was going at a very, very low simmer. So the next step is to take some cold water, about a half a cup, and a couple of tablespoons of flour in a jar. The reason I use a jar is because it's very simple and easy to work with. You just shake it up and just keep shaking until there are no more lumps left. And this is what we're going to use to thicken the sauce that the beef is in. Now some people use a roux, but I find that a roux is much more work than it's, uh, that it needs to be because with the roux you have to cook the flour with butter and you don't need that. All we're looking for is thickening. So by just shaking up some flour and some water and adding it to the broth, you'll get the thickening that you need. Now make sure that you stir while you're pouring to avoid lumps. And after we add this concoction, we'll simmer it for about another two or three minutes until it reaches the thickness that we like. And at that point, it's ready to serve. All right, it's only been a couple of minutes and you can see that the gravy is nice and thick. This way it'll stick to the noodles and it sticks to the beef and this is just the way we want it. And you'll also see that the beef itself is very tender. I can just cut it with this spoon. So now we're ready to serve this. Enjoy. So we're ready to eat. The house is filled with a great aroma of these beef tips that have mm. been cooking for three hours and these homemade noodles. And all we have to do now is decide how we want to eat them. So uh, how do you want yours? You can have them with just butter or you can have them with the beef tips. What do you think? I think I'll have the beef tips. Okay. Noodles. Well good, since we put a lot of work into it. So let's do that. So first you uh, plate a portion of noodles. There we go. We'll give ourselves a small portion so we can try some later with just butter. Then we um, add some of the uh, beef tips. And uh, that looks like a nice, uh, a nice plate. How does it smell? Mmm, beautiful. It does smell great. So the next thing to do is to take a bite. Now be careful because uh, we don't want you to burn yourself. So are you ready for your first bite? And I'm going to try it too. Mmm, yum. Mm. This is, it's fantastic. Delicious. It came out exactly the way I remember it 40 years ago. It's just a great taste. Well, it's so great that you taught us all this love of cooking and this love of food. I just don't know how to thank you. I know the best way to thank me, and that is whenever you boys cook, think of your dad and me. Well, that's a deal. I'll do that. Thank you again. Mm. You know, I had so much fun today. I never get tired of cooking and sharing that cooking with others. So I'll keep doing this as long as I can. Well, now it's time to say goodbye. Goodbye from your happy hooker. Oh, I mean cooker. Bye-bye. <laughs>